Good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, I think whenever finance and sustainability leaders join forces, there is a big opportunity for innovation and impact that uh, I hope to be unleashed. And uh, I'm delighted to be joining you. I'd also like to acknowledge my fellow speakers here at the conference. I've enjoyed hearing from you this week. It's a privilege to be included in this group and very inspiring. Uh, to hear your, your commitment and ambition to, to help deliver a sustainable future. I guess it's almost poetic that, that Friedman's now infamous New York Times essay headlined, the sole responsibility of businesses to increase its profits would, would mark its 50th anniversary here in the middle of this global uh, pandemic. Uh, as most of us here today deal in numbers, I'll start by sharing a few to underscore what I think is the magnitude of the challenge you know, that we are, we are facing. 19 of the 20 warmest years on record have all occurred since 2001. Over the last 20 years, we've lost 50% of the coral reefs with an expected 90% to be lost by 2050 if we don't do something. And men own more than 50% of the world's, world's wealth. And the 22 richest men have more wealth than all women in Africa. So that's why about a decade ago, Mars, a company where I worked for almost 20 years, we asked ourselves, what is the right level of profit for the corporation? And is the balance of value sharing really you know, sustainable? I think at the time we asked that question, it may have seemed a little unusual uh, for a business but right now, here in the middle of this global pandemic that has exposed also a lot of inequalities uh, and flaws in our global systems, I think it's a very appropriate question and probably an existential question. So I'm sitting here as a CFO in this reality of COVID-19, racial injustice and, and an urgent climate crisis. And uh, I'm focused on what we call holistic value creation driven by sustainable growth, positive societal impact, and really transforming the business of Mars Incorporated. Um, of course, performance management on the near term, compliance and good governance and controls are still very important. But really increasingly, you know, our measures of performance at Mars include non-financial metrics because we strongly believe that sustainability investment must be an integral part of our company's growth of our investment and ultimately of our value creation strategy. So if we as finance leader really start to focus on strategy, embedding sustainable growth and transformation and focus as much as that as we do on the financial work we do, then we can really create a new accountability culture that is bound to change things as we go forward. I think at a more practical level, what does that look like? Well, it means increased focus on, on responsible business practices, like key financial decisions, like when we make M&A decisions, uh, the way we do capital allocation, and the way we follow up on compliance and energy efficiency and carbon regulation. So in, in my books, it means taking a holistic and long-term approach to finance, considering a broader set of outcomes that goes beyond you know, just the the current economy and the fiscal reality of, of, of the current environment. And making decisions that make good business sense today and tomorrow, as well as decisions that are just the right thing to do to make the business sustainable, or as I like to call it, modern to the times. And I think to be you know, truly successful, business needs to stand for more than just near-term financial performance. And I'm sure many of you would agree to that. And in this world we're in right now, winning is, is really much more about financial performance in the short term. It's about having a positive impact on the society in which we operate. And it does come with a set of metrics that finance teams need to assess, being capable of measuring and being able to use when we make investment decisions. And, and I think the challenge comes from finding the right balance between these new metrics and ensuring that 
we as a company are not winning on one at the exclusion of the other or vice versa. Uh, you know, at Mars, we are, we are driven by the belief that the world we want tomorrow starts with how we do business today. And the idea and the purpose at the center of all of this, it, I really think it has been, or the time we've been in business is that the strategy that we have needs to drive the decisions we make starting you know, today. We at Mars employ 135,000 employees. We call them associates at Mars. We operate you know, all over the world. And many of you would probably know some of our great confectionery brands, Skittles, Snickers, Twix, M&Ms, or Ricky Chewing Gum. But actually our best, big, biggest business is pet care. More than half the company, more than half of these associates. And we are also the largest veterinary health operator in the world with more than two and a half thousand veterinary hospitals. And really regardless where you, where you are in the mass system, uh, purpose is a common thread. And at our company, we believe it's important to recognize purpose and recognize that purpose without profit isn't possible, but also that profit without a purpose isn't really meaningful. And our job as business leaders is in fact to pursue both. Um, there's a strong commitment to mutuality at Mars. Um, we really believe in creating enduring value um, for our business as well as for our stakeholders is pivotal as we look ahead. And that is really at the heart of our value set, something we call the five principles. Um, and these principles are really built on a fundamental belief that an imbalance between the value that a company creates and the value that we create for the ecosystem around us needs to be balanced. And if it's not, it leads to an unsustainable environment. Um, and we actually believe so deeply in this that we posed that question 10 years ago. And this year we, are, we launched an independent economics and mutuality platform, in short EOM. Uh, it's a groundbreaking management innovation that empowers company to adopt some responsible approaches to a more complete form of capitalism. Um, we've developed this for a decade together with a number of academic partners. And if you do have an interest, I encourage you to Google economics of mutuality and you will be able to find uh, you know, that website. Um, I think what differentiates us as Mars, therefore, is how we do things. Uh, our financial freedom is clearly helped and enabled by being privately owned. It allows us to take a longer term view and not so much think only in quarters, but more long term in generations. And, and really asking ourselves what impact the decisions we make today will, will have on the future as opposed to just on the next few quarters. Um, and managing that balance and tension is, is critical. Um, despite the challenges we face as a business, also in the current environment, we are not wavering from key commitments such as our sustainability and the generation plan that we launched a few years ago. We've invested more than $1 billion in driving transformational change in, in the areas of, of broad sustainability or ESG, not incremental improvements, but really uh, fundamental change. And some of those big ambitions including, include slashing our greenhouse gas emissions across the value chain, extended value chain by 67% by 2050, uh, improving the lives of 1 million people, farmers in our value chain. Uh, we have lots of smallhold farmers around the world and a lot of third world countries, and we want to treat them with fairness and respect. And we want to help billions of people that enjoy our products and services, whether they're humans or pets, to lead healthier, happier lives. And one of our most recent achievements, which I'm, I'm, we're really proud of, is last month we announced the uh, Palm Positive Plan, where we've already now delivered a deforestation-free palm oil supply chain for Mars Incorporated. This is a significant milestone in our, in our efforts to address two things, deforestation, big challenge in our greenhouse gas emission, and also advance significantly on human rights aspect of our sustainability plan. What we've done here is we've simplified 
our supply chain reduced the number of mills, uh, obviously giving those fewer mills more business uh, in return for a long-term contract where we are very clear about our commitments to our plan and the expectations we have of our suppliers and how we're going to monitor them on an, on an ongoing basis. So really a big step forward. It's just one of the examples where we've been able to improve and take action and not just talk about it. Um, as a purposeless company, we are holding ourselves you know, accountable for uh, delivering across multi dimensions of measures, not just financials. And really, I'd like to think we're fostering a new finance culture that ensure we are living up to that ambition. I'll come back to that. Um, we refer to this set of metrics as our mass compass. Uh, and it charges us really to pursue what I like to call holistic value creation. This compass is guiding our board, the mass family, uh, the mass leadership team, and we operationalize it through our business strategies. And it's really an enterprise tool that uh, that helps us assess we are whether we are living up to our purpose and also creating mutual benefits and a sustainable world. So the four quadrants in, in, in simple terms, yes, it is about financial performance. Clearly, we cannot ensure investments for tomorrow without also having a healthy you know, financial performance. So we need to ensure that on an ongoing basis. And it's focused very much on growth in the second quadrant. Uh, are we in sustainable categories? Sustainable here in a very broad sense that also create good growth, which is a source of prosperity and ability to invest. Uh, and the third, the third quadrant is about positive societal impact. We are choosing here for the moment to focus on greenhouse gases as defined in our sustainable energy generation plan, as well as how we are improving the working lives of 1 million people and nourishing well-being of our consumers. And finally, in our fourth quadrant, we're talking about trusted partnership. Um, we are measuring amongst our stakeholders, whether that is NGOs around us, governmental bodies, peers, and consumers. Um, and that's a proxy for whether we are living up to the commitment and the expectations that, that are of us. Um, so that's how we are running things from the very you know, top of the organization. I think beyond the senior leadership and, and that objective said there is a significant opportunity for the finance team to step up and challenge and ensure that we are actually doing the things that we say that we are setting out as objectives. Um, and in doing so, we're working hard on finance to continue to be a trusted business partner, not just on finance, but actually on a broad range of transformation and really helping sure the organization is, is delivering on that holistic purpose-led value creation. One of the initiatives in, in ensuring that is, um, is the effort that I'm, I'm really proud of that we've joined the Accounting for Sustainability Movement or A4S, an organization established by His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales in 2004, with really the aim of transforming finance to deliver a sustainable future very brave and bold move and uh, I'm working alongside my fellow leaders in, in Europe and North America where we're working to take action together, transform decision making and scale up efforts at all levels of our organizations um, and beyond. What's crucial about this effort is that we are focused on practical action by sharing best practices and and mobilizing really a unique global community that A4S has built to catalyze action and, 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 and drive improvement. As a group, what we've agreed on is that transformation of finance is, is essential to achieve a sustainable future. Our team sit at the center of organizations across the economy from asset owners to banks, governments, and companies like the one I'm representing. And I'm sure in the audience here, we've got a very broad range of, of finance leaders represented as well. And when we come together, I think it can be very powerful in transforming a number of the decisions that are being made every day in business for a more sustainable future. So we really believe that finance teams are a winning catalyst for change. 
and really showing that there is no trade-off between being responsible and being successful, that that is a possibility. At Mars, our, our purpose is that the world we want tomorrow starts with how we do business today. And it's not just a phrase for us. It's, it's our inspiration for pushing the boundaries and challenging ourselves, whether talking about innovating in our portfolio, exploring new ways to connect with consumers or fixing what's really broken in our global supply chain. The finance team at Mars is a dynamic one and integrating finance and sustainability is key to unlocking real long-term change. I believe we cannot uncouple or decouple sustainability from financial performance. In fact, you know, they're mutually reinforcing. As business transformation enables, finance is also uniquely positioned to bring the same rigor as we do in our balance sheet to implementing and measuring sustainability goals. And uh, at my organization, you know, the finance function must lead the, the sustainability strategy implementation by fully integrating it into the way we talk about business strategy, the way we talk about strategic source, resource allocation, and the way we define our account accountability matrix in the organization. And we're doing that. Um, we, are very, we are subscribing very much to the sixth dimension that A4S has identified in order to integrate sustainability and finance. And, and for ease, we cluster those within three groups, strategy and business partnering, governance and measurement and executional excellence. And give a bit more detail, I mean, within <clears throat> strategy and business partnering, you will find dimensions of leadership, vision and strategy and integrating with business processes. Uh, we bring that to life through the mass compass, of course, but really also the way we are driving strategy, resource allocation and business performance conversations are critical. That needs to be enabled by strong governance and measurements and clearly defining those measurements and incentivizing those measurements is critical. And I can't say we are all the way there, but we've made a good first step forward and have already got many of our most senior leaders rewarded for half of their incentives, you know, on sustainability metrics as well. And then clearly we need to execute with excellence. And uh, here we are working hard on putting in the right data and systems and build knowledge and capabilities in order to create these new metrics, have robust data around them, and, um, and, and, and let that flow through to our decision making. Um, one of the big challenges is all of that is, how do we measure the performance of a company's sustainability commitments? Really with the same robustness and detail as we are calculating the profit of a company. And what are the accounting standards that we need to adapt in order to, to do that. So it's meaningful, comparable, and consistent over time. And <clears throat> as many companies look to balance profit and, and purpose of sustainability efforts, the demands for standards are, are ever increasing and, and the measures of ESG has, has sought. And I think we're probably all caught up in what is famously been phrased now as the, uh, as the alphabet soup. SASB, uh, TCFD, IFRS, that all of them out there. Um, and I think a number of organizations has, has called for an end to this and, and let's come up with uh, one set of standards. That's at least what I would like to call for. We're a single globally recognized sustainability reporting framework. Um, so before I leave you, I'm going to pose a question that Mars asked our itself 10 years ago. What is the right level of profit? And is the balance of value sharing sustainable? What I hope you will now consider is that this is one that fully weighs the multi-stakeholder point of view and accounts for the often intangible value of non-financial capitals, human, social, et cetera, environmental. Um, it is mutual, creating enduring value for both the business and the world around it. 
And I want to reinforce the concept of holistic value creation in that, in that context, in, encapsulated in the idea that purpose without profit isn't possible, but profit without purpose isn't meaningful. I think when prioritized equally, it can unlock so much more good for the people everywhere. And finally, I'll call on all of you to lead with purpose while delivering, of course, some great you know, business result and beyond the near term implications of COVID-19, we, we cannot lose sight on the future that we want to build for ourselves, our children, society, and of course the planet. And we all have an urgent responsibility and opportunity to step up to drive that. And I'm confident that you will do that. Thank you.